listening to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 5, Part 3, Heart Pathologies. As we've already talked about, there are a lot of terms in this chapter. There are many, many pathologies. Fortunately, you should be able to figure most of them out using the word parts. However, there are some terms that don't follow the rules, and I'll be highlighting those for you. And also, in this episode, I'm going to try to help you get a general conceptual framework for the heart pathologies. Oftentimes, this is a case where people tend to miss the forest for the trees, as they say. You get caught up in the individual terms, and you don't see the big picture, which could really help you keep them straight. Another issue is that there are a lot of terms here that are used in the common vernacular and they may be used incorrectly or they're kind of slippery. So I'm going to help you be aware of those kinds of problems. So here we go. The first type of heart pathology the textbook mentions are the congenital heart defects. And we learned the word congenital way back in chapter 2. Do you remember what congenital means? Congenital means that you're born with it. So a congenital heart defect would be something like if you were born with a faulty heart valve, or it might be that you're born with a hole in your heart, which would have to be surgically repaired early on. The second major type of heart pathology is the coronary artery disease. Now, the coronary arteries are special arteries which actually supply the heart itself with blood. If you look at the textbook, you'll see there's diagrams of the outside of the heart, and they highlight the coronary arteries. And the coronary arteries actually are connected to the aorta itself. So as soon as oxygenated blood is being pumped out of the heart towards the body, there's this little feed there where the coronary arteries come in and they get an immediate supply of blood that then goes back to the heart muscle itself. So coronary artery disease involves a condition of reduced blood supply to the heart. It's where the coronary arteries become blocked up and the heart itself does not receive a necessary oxygen supply. Now, this blockage is caused by a condition called atherosclerosis. A-T-H-E-R-O-S-C-L-E-R-O-S-I-S. -E and we talked about that term way back in chapter one with the look-alike, sound-alike terms. Do you remember what atherosclerosis means? Well, atherosclerosis means the narrowing of the arteries caused by a buildup and hardening of fatty plaques. That's the key idea here. Athero refers to fatty plaque. Sclerosis means hardening. So it's fatty plaque that hardens inside the artery, and that creates a blockage. Okay, this is different from the term arteriosclerosis. A-R-T-E-R-I-O-S-C-L-E-R-O-S-I-S. -E -E Do you remember what the difference is with arteriosclerosis? Well, arteriosclerosis is the age-related hardening and loss of elasticity of the arteries themselves. It's something that happens with aging, okay? Whereas atherosclerosis is the clogging up of the arteries with these fatty plaques, okay? So when the fatty plaques harden inside the artery, this can lead to coronary artery disease if the plaques become large enough that they start to block off the blood flow. Now, that leads us to a type of coronary artery disease, 
One of the types of coronary artery disease is known as ischemic heart disease. Ischemic, I-S-C-H-E-M-I-C, heart disease. Now, ischemic heart disease is a term that refers to a group of cardiac disabilities that are caused by the insufficient blood supply to the heart. So it's a broad term referring to a variety of disorders, all tied to insufficient blood supply to the heart. Now, ischemic comes from the term ischemia, I-S-C-H-E-M-I-A. Ischemia is narrowly the condition of insufficient blood supply to the heart. So, let's back up here. If you have atherosclerosis, that is the hardening of the fatty plaques inside the heart. These fatty plaques can block off the blood supply. That's a condition known as ischemia. When you have the condition of insufficient blood supply, that can cause an ischemic heart disease. Now, related to ischemia, we have another term, angina, also called angina pectoris. A-N-G-I-N-A P-E-C-T-O-R-I-S. Now, angina or angina pectoris is a very narrow term. It refers to a chest pain that is caused by the ischemia. And again, what's ischemia mean? Well, ischemia is the inadequate blood flow, right? So if you have the inadequate blood flow, ischemia, that can cause pain in the chest, and we call that pain in the chest angina. Okay, so that covers ischemic heart disease. Now, things can get worse than ischemia. Someone can have a condition known as the myocardial infarction. M-Y-O-C-A-R-D-I-L-I-N-F-A-R-C-T-I-O-N. Now, this is the medical term for a heart attack. It's having the big one, okay? A myocardial infarction happens when we have the total blockage of one or more coronary arteries, okay? So we've gone a step beyond ischemia where there's an inadequate blood flow. In this case, the blood flow stops. And the term for the sudden stoppage of blood supply is infarction. I-N-F-A-R-C-T-I-O-N. The infarction is a sudden loss of blood supply that will lead to tissue death. So a myocardial infarction means it's not getting the oxygenated blood supply it needs, and so the heart muscle actually starts to die. That's a heart attack. That's the myocardial infarction. Okay, those are the coronary artery diseases. So kind of keep that hierarchy in your mind. There are degrees of coronary artery disease going from, you know, a mild ischemia all the way to the big MI, the myocardial infarction. And the root cause of these things is the atherosclerosis, that hardening of the fatty plaques. Okay, the third type of heart pathology is what is known as heart failure. Now, this is kind of a tricky term because it's so general. Heart failure, well, that just means the heart fails, right? People sometimes confuse that with the myocardial infarction because the heart is failing, it's dying, right? We also have something called a cardiac arrest we're going to talk about. Well, there the heart is failing. So we have to be careful. Heart failure is such a general term, but it actually has a specific meaning, okay? When we talk about heart failure, we more precisely are talking about something called congestive heart failure. C-O-N-G-E-S-T-I-V, congestive heart failure. Well, what is congestive heart failure? What does this mean? Congestive heart failure is a chronic condition in which the heart is unable to pump effectively. And because the heart doesn't pump effectively, fluid is going to start to build up in places in the body. 
That's what we mean by congestive or congestion, that it's that fluid buildup. And one of the symptoms of congestive heart failure is edema, E-D-M-A. And edema is the medical term for a swelling in the body caused by fluid buildup. And in the textbook, they show you pictures of the various places that fluid buildup, edemia can occur because of congestive heart failure. Now, one particular type of edema they talk about is pulmonary edema, P-U-L-M-O-N-A-R-Y edema. Again, pulmonary refers to the lungs. And pulmonary edema is a fluid buildup in the lungs because the left side of the heart is not effectively pumping blood out of the lungs to the rest of the body. The next type of heart pathology is the arrhythmia, and specifically cardiac arrest. Arrhythmia is a difficult term to spell. It's A-R-R-H-Y-T-H-M-I-A. R-rhythm-ia. That helps me to spell it. It has the word rhythm in the middle of it, and rhythm is a hard word to spell. Uh, I would suggest practicing writing that one over and over till you get used to it. Rhythm, R-H-Y-T-H-M. Rhythm. Arrhythmia, A-R-R-H-Y-T-H-M, and then I-A, is a condition of an abnormal heart rhythm. It basically refers to the way the heart beats. It should have that normal sinus rhythm, and if there's a disruption of that rhythm, we have an arrhythmia. Now, a cardiac arrest is a situation when the normal heart rhythm stops or develops a severely abnormal rhythm so that the heart is not pumping correctly at all. And cardiac arrest, when the heart literally just stops beating, is very serious. You can die in minutes if the heart is not restarted. Now, in addition to the arrest, meaning the heart rhythm stops completely, there are some other types of arrhythmias that are described in the textbook. And I'm going to go over those and hopefully try to clarify those because those can be a little tricky. First of all, arrhythmias can occur either in the atrium, which would be an atrial arrhythmia, A-T-R-I-A-L, re referring to the atriums, or an arrhythmia can be in the ventricles, and that would be a ventricular arrhythmia. V-E-N-T-R-I-C-U-L-A-R refers to the ventricles. Now, there's two types of arrhythmias. First of all, there is the fibrillation, F-I-B-R-I-L-L-A-T-I-O-N, and fibrillation is when the heart muscle has an irregular twitching. It is not doing that normal contraction, relax, contraction, relax. It just kind of quivers and twitches, and it's a very ineffective type of rhythm, and it just is not going to cause the blood to be pumped well at all. The second type is the tachycardia, T-A-C-H-Y-C-A-R-D-I-A. Tachycardia refers to a fast heart rate, rapid contractions, in some cases so rapid that the rest of the heart can't keep up, and again, that causes problems with the blood pumping through. So this leads us to four types of arrhythmias. First of all, we have those affecting the atria. We have atrial fibrillation also known as AFib. And atrial fibrillation is an irregular quivering of the atria. We can also have an atrial tachycardia, also referred to as a paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. In this case, 
one has a short, sudden episode of very rapid atrial contractions or beats. Basically, the atria just suddenly start pumping really, really fast. And then it will slow down again. Then we can look at the ventricular arrhythmias. There is the ventricular fibrillation, also known as V-fib. V-fib would be the irregular quivering of the ventricles. And this is very, very serious. If the ventricles irregularly quiver, they are not pumping the blood out of the heart well at all, and this can lead to sudden cardiac death. And then finally, we have ventricular tachycardia, also could be known as VTAC. And this is an episode of rapid ventricular contractions. The ventricles start going really, really fast. And this again causes the blood not to pump effectively to the body. And it can be, again, a serious condition if it's not corrected. Okay, well, that is an overview of the major types of heart pathology. Now, there are other things in the chapter, there are other terms related to heart problems. Most of those are pretty easy. You just parse the words and use the word parts. So I'm not going to go over those with you. But now at this point, I'm going to give you a little review and practice over the major types of heart pathology. What does the term heart failure mean? Well, heart failure is the chronic condition in which the heart is unable to pump effectively and it results in a fluid buildup in the body. And what is the term that we use for swelling that is caused by a fluid buildup in the body? Well, that's edema, E D. E -M -A. What is the term for an abnormal heartbeat? Well, that's an arrhythmia. A R R H Y T H M I A. What is the term? for the hardening of a fatty plaque within an artery. That's atherosclerosis, A-T-H-E-R-O-S-C-L-E-R-O-S-I-S. What is the term for the chest pain one can feel that's caused by the inadequate flow of blood to the heart? Well, that's angina or angina pectoris, A-N-G-I-N-A-P-E-C-T-O-R-I-S. What is the term for a problem with the heart that you're born with? Well, that's a congenital heart defect. C-O-N-G-E-N-I-T-A-L, heart defect. What is the medical term for a heart attack? That's the myocardial infarction, M-Y-O-C-A-R-D-I-A-L-I-N-F-A-R-C-T-I-O-N. And what does infarction mean? Well, it's a sudden insufficiency of blood supply leading to tissue death.
What is the term that's used to apply to a condition of insufficient blood supply? I should rephrase that. We're not talking about a total blockage. We're just talking about a partial blockage. Well, that's ischemia, I-S-C-H-E-M-I-A. Ischemia is insufficient in the sense that blood is getting through, but it's not the ideal amount. An infarction is total blockage. There is no blood getting through. And what is the term for the sudden stoppage of the heartbeat? Well, that's cardiac arrest, C-A-R-D-I-A-C, -A -A cardiac arrest, A-R-R-E-S-T. What is the term for an extremely rapid rate of heartbeat, much faster than normal? Well, that's tachycardia. T-A-C-H-Y-C-A-R-D-I-A. -A -A. And what is the term for the irregular quivering or twitching of one of the uh, chambers of the heart? Well, that's fibrillation. F-I-B-R-I-L-L-A-T-I-O-N. What is the term for the sudden onset of rapid atrial contractions? Well, that's paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. What is the term for irregular quivering of the ventricles that can lead to sudden cardiac death. That's ventricular fibrillation, otherwise known as V-fib. What is the term for the irregular quivering of the atria? Well, that's atrial fibrillation. And finally, what is the term for an episode of rapid ventricular contractions, which again causes the blood to not pump effectively to the rest of the body? That's ventricular tachycardia. And what is the term for a set of cardiac disabilities that is caused by insufficient blood supply to the heart? Well, that's ischemic heart disease. Okay, so I hope this will help you with your studies of the various types of heart pathologies Again, it really helps if you keep the major categories in mind. We have the congenital heart defects, the coronary artery disease, heart failure, more precisely known as congestive heart failure, and finally, the arrhythmias. And again, there are other things that can go wrong with the heart. We can have infections, inflammations, other things that are talked about in the chapter those are fairly easy to keep straight. You can understand them just by parsing the terms. Well, in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and look at the pathologies of the blood vessels. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.